On March the 22nd, 1952, an issue of Collier's magazine went on sale in the US that sparked widespread public interest in rocketry and space travel. A series of six lavishly illustrated articles set out a future based on science, not science fiction, in which humans would build a space station in Earth orbit and then journey on to the Moon and Mars. Man will conquer space soon, the magazine proclaimed, and the American public, energized by what they saw and read, quickly got behind the idea. It all started when Collier's managing editor, Gordon Manning, invited the pioneering space artist Chesley Bonestell to attend a San Antonio conference on physics and medicine in the upper atmosphere, at which there'd be many leading experts on astronautics and rocketry. Bonestell was already well known for his astronomical artwork. A series of his paintings showing Saturn as seen from several of its moons appeared in Life magazine in 1944, and he supplied special effects art to early sci-fi movies including Destination Moon in 1950 and When Worlds Collide in 1951. At the conference held at the Air Force School of Aviation Medicine, Bonestell was impressed by the enthusiasm and expertise of Werner von Braun, who had been brought to America at the end of World War II and was now working on ballistic missiles for the US military. Bonestell suggested to Collier's editors that von Braun was the man to send our rocket to the moon. A week later, the two men were at the magazine's New York offices along with some other great names of mid-century space science and illustration. Willie Lay, who had already collaborated with both Von Braun and Bonestell, astronomer Fred Whipple, international law expert Oscar Schachter, artists Fred Freeman and Rolf Klepp, and physicist Joseph Kaplan. Together, these spaceflight visionaries set about depicting and explaining for the layperson every element of von Braun's proposed integrated space program, from the first piloted rockets to a mission to Mars. The March 22nd issue of Collier's featured an editorial titled What Are We Waiting For? and articles by von Braun, Lay, Whipple, Kaplan, the physicist Heinz Haber, and Schachter on topics that included getting humans into space, building a space station, and astronomy above the atmosphere. Bonestell, Freeman, and Klepp illustrated the articles with paintings and drawings accurately based on von Braun's designs, and incredibly enticing to a public eager to witness the dawn of the space age. Seven more issues of Collier's followed between 1952 and 1954, in which further illustrated articles appeared written by von Braun, Ley, and Whipple. These dealt with specific topics such as man trips to the moon, survival in space, and the possibility of life on Mars. The Collier's magazine articles formed the basis for three episodes in the Disneyland anthology TV series, the first of these, called Man in Space and directed by Disney animator Ward Kimball, originally aired on March the 9th, 1955. Set in Disney's Tomorrowland, it was narrated partly by Kimball and also by Leigh, Harbour, Von Braun and Dick Tufeld, who voiced the robot in the TV series Lost in Space. Two further episodes, Man in the Moon, which first aired on December 8, 1955, and Mars and Beyond in 1957 were also directed by Kimball. And the Collier's articles were expanded into three books, Across the Space Frontier in 1952, Conquest of the Moon in 1953, and The Exploration of Mars in 1956. The Space Age began just a year later, with the launch of Sputnik 1, on October the 4th, 1957, and by the end of the next decade, the great Saturn V rocket designed by von Braun had propelled the first humans to a landing on the moon. <laughs>